Good evening, everyone. I know it is evening, but I was busy this morning. I had to, uh, I had a morning shoot. I uh, had an hour, almost hour and a half drive to uh, to the location, which is more like an hour and 10 minutes, I think. I don't know. Um, and then I was filming and uh, busy until now. And I just had a couple thoughts pop into my head that um, you know, really, I think we're worth sharing. So, not morning conversations tonight, it's evening conversations. So, uh, the first thing I wanted to, uh, first thing I wanted to mention was the great trap. So, I'm going to talk about, um, business today. I'm not, I'm not a great businessman, but I have been in the around business people for, oh, I don't know, something like 10 years now. Um, sometimes more closely with them than others. But uh, one thing, one of the great traps of um, young entrepreneurship is to get too inwardly focused. And sometimes it even happens with large organizations. But um, especially I think when you're just starting out you're in love with this idea you have. You believe it's the best thing in the world. You can see how great it is. But then you go to talk to your prospective clients and they don't see it. Why? Because you're speaking to yourself. You're not speaking to them. The entrepreneur, the young entrepreneur is caught up in their own perspective. So what needs to happen? Well, there's an axiom in the startup world that you have to uh, you have to solve a real world problem, and so what you have to do is you have to look at you have to look at your product through their service through their lens. It's like why why should that person care about what you have to offer? Um, so you have to really fray like when, whenever you're speaking to a prospective uh, customer or client. Uh, you really have to phrase things in the way um, you have to speak in a way that respects their pain points and their needs and their desires. I mean, the most one way of putting it bluntly is that your clients and customers are selfish. Like they need to know how your product and service is going to improve their lives. Um, make them more money or achieve some kind of goal. They're not interested in, you know, the, uh, they're not interested in the things that you care about. They're interested in the things that they care about. And so when you speak to them, you have to speak, you have to match what you're doing to what they care about. Uh, and if there's not a match, you might want to get a new line of business. I had to do that uh, recently. I for a year, I worked to market a full service video production to small businesses in Lincoln, Nebraska. And by the end of the year, uh, my savings was dwindling, and I was like, you know, I can't keep this up. And the simple truth of the matter is, small businesses in Lincoln, Nebraska, whether or not they actually need video, we can argue that all day long they don't believe they need video. And it's very difficult to change the mind of your target audience. So you have to work with uh, their existing predispositions. Full disclosure, I hate that. I'm very much a, you know, I wanna build my own brand and my brand is the best thing ever and I don't care if other people like it. Uh, I, I'm very much, at home with that mentality, but it's bad business. So do your best, even if it hurts, to speak to the problems and the desires and the dreams and the worldview of your prospective clients and customers. That's how you build a business. Or in startup speak, find an existing problem and solve that. Don't try to manufacture a problem where there is none so that you can provide a solution. It's uh, some tough love, but that's the reality of it. Second thing I had in mind was I was thinking about 
um, how you bring a organization into fruition from the very beginning. And it seems to me that you start with the concept, you know, just a little, a little strand of the idea. It can be any part of the idea. You know, you take that little strand and you start with that and you let it grow, you, you flesh it out. And then after the concept is matured, then you move on to planning a structure, you know, that sort of logistical framework that is going to, uh, that your, your business, your organization, your idea, whatever it is you're trying to start, you know, fits inside that structure. And then after the structure is, is put in place, the theoretical structure, by the way, um, then you make the actual uh, organization, the actual building, whether that's the actual product, whether that's the, you know, the, the minutia, the little details, maybe it's processes, maybe it's content, you know, all the particulars of the business. But you've got to start with the concept and then you've got to go to the structure and then you've got to go to the particulars. And then you pivot when you find out that your business is <laughs> not working. Um, but it has to go in that order. You can't start with the particulars of the business. You might gain short-term traction, but you'll be, I really think you'll just be spinning your hamster wheels if you don't have, you know, the, the big picture set of mind. So just some thoughts for your evening. Um, maybe I'll go back to philosophy sooner or later, but I'm having trouble in the mornings when I wake up. I don't have, I don't really have good ideas. They seem to be coming more in the, in the evening. Um, so this might have to switch from morning conversations to evening conversations. Stay tuned about that. So until next time.